the idea of utopia is something that um, acts as some kind of dream for the future, some something for people to to aspire to, something which has been lost, I think, in in the modern world. Dr. Dylan Evans, one of the UK's leading researchers in artificial intelligence, resigned from his post and sold his house to fund the Utopia experiment. It is a time-limited social experiment that aims to simulate a post-apocalyptic society, void of technology and modern-day comforts. Officially launched in April 2007, the experiment hopes to raise awareness about the UK's overconsumption of natural resources. The idea came to me because I've been thinking for a long time about the future and whether the kind of way in which we're living at the moment is sustainable. And uh, it struck me that um, it's not. So I decided that uh, one of the best ways to try and think about the future is not just to sit in an armchair and imagine what it's going to be like but to try and act it out by recruiting a number of volunteers to come and take part in the experiment and actually live how people might live in the future. It might help to think a bit more clearly about some of the problems involved and some of the dilemmas that the survivors might face. I know Dylan from university. We were undergraduates together from 87 to 91 in Southampton. And Dylan um, had the idea of setting up this experiment First, he hoped to do it in Mexico, decided the logistics were a bit overwhelming, and could he do it here? So I thought, great idea. I was one of the first to hear about it after Dylan put it on the internet, and it just fitted with quite a few ideas that I had. What am I doing at the Utopia Experiment? Well, because I'm interested in, in self-sustaining uh, self, um, societies, and, uh, and I'm worried about the environment. She's been doing a lot of research about peak oil and it does kind of worry me. Um, so, yeah, I came up here to see what it's about and kind of learn some things and make some contacts and have a think about it. My name's Angela. I'm a receptionist living down in Newbury. Um, so I live a boring nine to five life, but I'm very interested in working with the land and things like that, getting more back to nature. So that's why I've come up. We are now living in a very different kind of world, a, a world where millions of strangers interact with each other uh, through markets, through the internet, through uh, systems of government, and it's something that human beings are maybe not really well adapted to, something that we have no historical precedent for at all, and this might explain why people find it very difficult to live in this, in this way. So the idea is if you put people back into a more uh, a kind of environment in which is more suited to their psychology, maybe they would be happier. Survive, I'm saying that, you know what I mean? I'm talking about how they survive. So how could you survive here if the land wasn't nourishing us, we'd have to move, pick up our tents and go to another part of the land? They were, but they didn't have an agricultural society. I love the barn last night. Do we need this seat there? I say the experiment was going fairly well in terms of setup, getting ready, but there was always a little problem that 18 months was not long enough. The problem is having to wait for the vegetables to start growing. You know, all right, they're, they're all seeded, they're all out there starting to grow, but you've got to wait for the crop to come. Oh, we're still still using normal shopping but steadily we'll reduce that. We're starting to eat our own stuff already and I would think that by the end of July we should be just about self-sufficient in most of the vegetables that we grow in the UK. Dr Evans underestimated the time it would take to become self-sufficient and was still buying food for the volunteers. As building costs increased, he asked his old friend Angus Ford to help him with much needed construction work. As I said to you, I think he's tried to micromanage every single aspect of it, from hoeing the garden to doing something to do it. And as you would know, you can't on a project like this. You've got to let it go. I mean, it's a terribly artificial setup, of course. Don't forget. 
which means that you know, no one's really look, coming here to opt out. So no one's really got a vested interest in it moving on, you know, in the building. You've got people digging who are never going to see those vegetables. So, you know, why should they? There's like half an acre of ground with seeds and there's a book. <laughs> and, uh, I wasn't, I, if I'd been told, you know, okay, you're going to have to do it, fine, maybe I would have been more mentally prepared, but I was just kind of really thrown by the fact I, I just had to sort everything out. There's so much to do that I think it's, um, it's overwhelmed Dylan a bit. I don't think he quite realised how much practical activity would be needed. He has no practical experience. The man has never been on a building site. He really has got so bogged down with the responsibility of it, the planning, permission, all this, and that it's frozen. He's a bit paralysed by what he's unleashed. Dr. Evans began to spend less time at the experiment and rented a cottage nearby. I don't really want to. I don't really want to talk about that. Fed up with the way Dr. Evans was running the experiment, Georgia decided to leave. It makes me feel very bad, obviously. That, you know, she was doing really well, and that's really, you know, that's, that's quite. You know, it's very upsetting. It was all going to be <clears throat> wonderful and easy and idyllic, or so he thought. I think once he kind of gets a bit of distance from it and comes back maybe rethinks a few kind of things on his side of terms of managing it, then it'd be fine, I think, really. I think so. He's got to stop this control thing. He's got to stop, you know, where he doesn't know about a certain discipline. He's just got to let someone else do it. A difficult project, a very, very difficult project, which has uh, taken on a life of its own and um, is now something that um, everybody else seems to think is going well but um, which I've been finding very difficult many times when I've thought of giving the whole thing up and um, I just want to find some way of taking it forward in a way that can save some of the good work that's been put in and make people realize that you know, they, they have something positive that they've contributed to. Anything he, he has taken on, he's succeeded at in his world. But that word, world can be stretched. He just took rather the severe leap <laughs> from one to, to a completely new world and didn't, I think the fact that he didn't question that it might be rather more difficult than he expected, that's what's made it so severe. And I think all very commendable. <coughs> To do that, to recognise that you are getting fat, slow, and stupid, and and to try and change it, very commendable. I'm quite brave. I mean, I've said this to the, from the beginning. I think he's been quite brave. Whether it, he's been naive, and he hasn't maybe done his research, or he's been a bit rinky-dinky about it, or a bit romantic, or something, I think it's still quite brave of him. And I think you have to applaud him for that. I mean, we all thought he was nuts. I mean, how can you? This can't be done overnight. But he did it, and now it's time to pass the baton to someone else.